There was another rough estimation, a guy worked with Moore Grove, who said that bandwidth would probably double, but only every 10 years. Um, that curve really depends where you are. You know, our nation is, is a, in the low middle of developed nations for general bandwidth speed. We've got some issues compared to some other countries. And they're not all, I mean, it's not all like, you know, the evil man in the sky. Some of it's the evil man in the sky. But, you know, it's a big country. <laughs> it's a, you know, you can, you can have fast bandwidth in Japan because by comparison, it's this little teeny, teeny place. And you, you can have bandwidth that's pretty good in places where you can put satellites up and you don't have the same kind of security concerns we do. And you put a lot of satellites up, a lot of fast bandwidth in a big area like Brazil because you got birds all over the place, right? We can't do that here for lots of, for lots of reasons. And then also we've got, you know, the government hasn't taken it over. It started it, but once it gave it away, that's it. It stopped, whereas in some other places you've got government or single company control, a monopoly. If i got a monopoly, I can do it a lot better than if I don't. So we've got all this competition. All the competition is supposed to push innovation, but what it really means is uh, I'm not going to invest the money because I'm not sure I'm going to win. You know, if we'd have given the whole thing over to AT&T in the first place and they'd have taken it, it probably would be faster, but it wouldn't be distributed in them. You know, it's, it's pluses and minuses, right? But one of the minuses for us is we don't have exponential bandwidth based on the way it would have worked if we didn't have all this intercompany competition essentially kind of knocking each other out of the box. You know, why would anybody come in and put it in when you're going to turn around and buy it from somebody else? So, um, so again, most of this, uh, most of the logic of these of the technology does explain how it works on silicon. And if we change mediums, we change the fundamentals of how computing works, um, the rules will change, as will this, you know, everything, the speed, the outcome, and everything else. So, you know, um, here this article describes using DNA to calculate a square root. Okay, we're beginning to learn how to calculate with, at the molecular structure, at the molecular level, right? The most complicated program, the two of them, we carry with us that we're aware of in the universe. One is DNA, the other one's the brain, the circuitry and the, and the, and the fundamental code. We haven't come anywhere near figuring either of them out. Now, we can map you know, the DNA now, but that doesn't mean we understand exactly how it all works. We can pull out a piece and put another piece in, but making it compute is a different issue. But we're working on it. Just like quantum, there are advances in the lab that make you say, oh, look, maybe we'll be able to do that. And if we can, it'll be way faster. And, and, and you know, it'll, we won't use silicon anymore. Everything will change, and it might. It's hard to know. There are some hitches, and I'll give you the big one. Remember, well, I'm going to come to this at the end and throughout, but I'll just sort of tease you with it. Remember, in quantum mechanics, you can't watch it directly, and you're not sure what the outcome is. <laughs> it's somewhat chaotic. So while we're doing that research, we're hoping that those guys don't like suck us into a black hole and end the universe as we know it while they're doing that research. And it doesn't make the future of computing look real predictable. You don't know how that's going to turn out. Now, it's unlikely they're going to suck us into a black hole. right? But when you do a quantum calculation, you're not sure exactly what you're going to get because it doesn't follow the standard rules of physics. It's a different set of rules with which we're not all that familiar. So we don't know exactly where this is going to go. Okay? It'll be exciting, probably. Uh, you know, and you can't forget about the delivery systems. We, we, in, in this, we've sort of been focusing on, really, the chips. Just as important are the delivery systems, what we would call the pipe wars. And, and we're just beginning, really, I mean, even though they've sort of been ongoing, we're really just beginning to sort of fight them. News item yesterday that has relevance to this? Okay. See, there's a downside to you guys not getting up in the morning and reading a newspaper with breakfast. There is a downside to that. I know that sounds like ancient history. You'd never consider it. Why would I want to do that? 
But the fact is, if you'd read the newspaper yesterday or this morning, you'd know about the AT&T merger and that they're being sent away at the door by the Justice Department. And they're going to sue. And there'll be a big lawsuit about whether or not AT&T can merge with T-Mobile. It's part of the pipe wars. It has to do with your career. So if, even if you don't open that newspaper, you got to get that New York Times open on the web every day. LA Times, Chicago Tribune, something big, something broad. Not just the Huffington Post. Get some news open. Get it in every day, because there's technology developments almost every day in this industry. you got to get some of it in there, or you'll lose track. Um, we don't think that one entity can win the pipe wars, although we're not sure of that yet. Uh, Negroponte noted that what we've got here in this age is a lot of switching. He made one proposal that everything that was in the ground would go to the air, everything that's in the air would go to the ground, and that happened. And now it's kind of reversing itself, and now we have a combination of it. The notion is it isn't going to stay the same. <clears throat> We're going to use different means to get this stuff across to folks. Okay. Um, great book called The Big Switch. I could even put that on the, on the list, but I won't. Um, um, Car Nicholas Carter's first, not first book, but book before the one you're going to read, uh, about the, 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 the wars between the companies that God is here, if you will. Um, you know, we're in a situation where not everything has to be live. Right? In serial, the archetype is you set the camera up, the people work in front of it, and then you send it right? simultaneously. And then you start to get away from that. In, in this environment, where it's all bits, it can all be stored, it can all be recombined, it can all be sent out, you get YouTube, you get Hulu, you get this, this non-part-time. Part-time was the term for breaking up the demographic into time slots and putting programs in those time slots, right? Certain part-time for programming. And it was consistent every Monday night you had. So you still see a TV schedule like that, but if you don't want to follow it, you can go look at it later, either by DVRing it or by looking at it online later. Okay? So you might not ever look at that whole schedule at all. Um, with bits, nothing really has to be live. Everything can be real, real, real live. And, and so you're seeing with the use of the DVR, for example, you know, everything that television, even though it's all taped and all that, even the, at least that's supposed to be on in some real-time sense, and it isn't anymore for, for lots of viewers. <clears throat> okay. So these guys will play a real important role. Now, there's some things you ought to know about this. Um, you ought to be able to describe what net neutrality is, what that means, what the implications of it are. You ought to understand net neutrality. You don't, at this point, in my view, have to take a side, because I'm not sure it's clear which side is really, <laughs> which side is the better side. But there are, you know, there's, there, there is this issue, and it's very important. Okay? And it's this notion of who gets to watch and block content over the internet. Who gets to gatekeep it? Um, and should it be just neutral? Nobody gets to gatekeep it. Or should it be, should there be places where it can be gatekeeped? And essentially the ISPs and the big companies, the big companies and the ISPs they represent, would very much like to move to a cable-like system, a little bit more like cable, where you kind of pay for tiers <clears throat> and, the, and then the content that you use is what you pay for. The, the problem that they have is that the feds have sort of forced all the guys who have wires, I'm overstating this, cable companies, phone companies, all the guys who have wires, to essentially open those up to everybody, more or less. And that isn't exactly the case. I know you go get service from Comcast or AT&T or it's different kind of service and all that. But there's some limits as to who they can say no to and how they can say no, such that they've been mandated to essentially the system's kind of open. So what happens is I pay, uh, we pay 39 a month for a pretty fast line. You know, I can do 
pretty much anything I need to do. And my kids can do what they need to do, and my wife can even get on and on. Um, but it's an open pipe up to the capacity of our machines and the bandwidth that's been assigned to that open pipe. It doesn't matter how much, I, how long I'm on it. So I could be at that rate just looking at a few web pages and sending some email. The guy next door might be a hardcore virtual reality gamer in a 3D game all the time, constantly sucking down, or it might be a peer-to-peer -peer file sharer, sucking down a like this. It's like opening a fire hose going into his house, you know, and I've got a flashlight. I pay the same as he does. Doesn't seem quite right. In fact, his use degrades my service. So if I'm Comcast, I want to be able to monitor him and throttle him. If I've charged him this much and he starts to use too much of that, I can throttle him down. If it's the wrong kind of content, I'm pretty sure it's a period of period and it's illegal, I can throttle them down. Right? And I can start to grade, tier my charges based on not only quality bandwidth, speed, but usage amount. That's a non-neutral net. What we've got now is roughly speaking a neutral net. There are different plans, but once I get that thing, I can do anything I want to with it. And I'm not generally monitored. Okay? That makes a big difference. <laughs> The internet's a whole different thing if it's not neutral. Now, you know, the companies are just moving to a non-neutral net on their own because we've got some legal trouble here. Because this thing grew the way it did, you're reading in the Ryan book how it grew, nobody's writing laws along the way. So you've got lots of regulation as to how television works and lots of regulation as to how the radio works, lots of regulation as to how phone works, and virtually no regulation as to regard to how the internet works. There's a little bit, but not as near as much. It's kind of a wild west. So essentially, the, for instance, the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, said to the internet providers, you can't monitor and throttle. And what did the provider say in response? It's just this summer. Last spring, this summer, what they say? Okay, if you're offended by the finger, close your eyes because this is what they said. You can't control us. Wait a minute, it's the FCC. This is the internet. This is a big communication thing. You can't control us. And you know what the Supreme Court said? They're right. The FCC has no authority over the internet. So the, that Verizon goes, <laughs> you know, and, and they all did because now there's no there is no controlling entity. If the FCC can't control them. Who the Dickens can? So they've all kind of started to put in these non-neutral plans. Some of them are actually in place. Some of them are still being kind of worked out. Um, then there's cloud. You know, the next thing in computing. How many of you are already signed up for a cloud music service? Apple just announced they're going to do one when they do this, go to this iCloud thing. Everybody's going to be able to listen. You're going to be able to listen to for, for uh, what was it, uh, $25 a year. You're going to be able to listen to um, all of the music that you get through Apple or have on your iPod from any device in the world. So everything <coughs> goes to the cloud and then it gets managed from there. And that's, you know, that's kind of where we're headed. Okay. Um, but who controls all the information in that stuff? If you use Google Documents, for instance, um, I'm going to bet that you haven't read the terms of service <laughs> that Google lists for Google Docs in terms of who owns what and what, who they can give it to and what control you have over it, et cetera. I'll bet you haven't read the terms of service. But what you're doing is giving them your documents. When you post things to Twitter, I'll bet you have no idea what they can do. I'll bet you have no idea what Facebook can do with your data. I'll bet you have no idea what Flickr can do with your pictures. Right? But you put all that stuff up there in the cloud somewhere, and somebody else has got it. 
then the question is, do you know how do we know how to trust them? Can they be trusted? In what ways can they be trusted? The, you know, the default, although it's not universally true, there are some exceptions, but the default, you have to remember this, folks. If I work for a police department or, or an authorized security agency, the military, the police, FBI, CIA, you know, all those guys, if I'm a legal government entity, I can walk into an ISP and get anything I want about, and I'm going to point at one of you randomly so you don't think I'm picking on you, about you. About you. Okay? Without a warrant, all I've got to do is say we suspect him, her, of potential terrorist or really illegal activity. And that ISP is helpless. They have no real way to say no. Now, occasionally, they do say no anyway. There's a couple of them who have a pretty good record saying, eh, get the hell out of here. Come back when you have a warrant. But a lot of them have said, oh, here, here's, here's the key. It's over here. Massive amounts of data while they're looking for somebody. Even if it's not you, they're looking for him. So I find out all about him and him and her and her and him and him while I'm looking about something for you, and then it turns out you're nothing. But I've looked at all that stuff. And the ISP went, oh, okay. Just folded. As soon as the guy walked in, showed his badge. Now, if you if it's phone, they gotta have a warrant from the judge. They gotta go argue to the judge that there's reasons why we think you're getting calls from overseas from suspected terrorists, Your Honor. Please, can we have a search warrant? Your Honor, and then they make a decision based on the argument. If it's an ISP, they walk in and say, hi, I'm the FBI. Can I see all of your stuff for the next, last three days? Sure. There's no way to stop them. We trust everything to the cloud. Uh, and of course, then, to end this up, you know, you might ask the question, how come it's not a public utility in America? There are a couple cities that have broadband. No, the cities are managing it, but it's anti-competitive. I mean, in, in, in simple terms, right or wrong, overstated, in America, in, a, demo, in a, uh, a capitalist economy of our type, governments taking over these functions is kind of anti-competitive. Now, it didn't stop the government from giving the whole thing to AT&T. It didn't stop the government from putting in water pipes. It didn't stop the government from parsing out the gas system. It didn't stop, you know... If, if, you, if, if your water system stops, you call City Hall. <clears throat> but in this stuff, there's so much money in it that essentially uh, 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 communities that have tried, and there's more, they're still trying, you know, cover with broadband. As soon as they start doing it, they, get, they start getting flack from the utilities because those guys don't want the city to come in and provide internet free for everybody. There's too much money in it. So there's some, but it's a it's it's a bit of a it's still a bit of a grind. Okay.